Okay, we're live. Oh boy. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our council meeting for November the 9th, 2021. I'd like to call the meeting to order, please. Remind everybody to uh, silence their devices. I've tried, I know it never seems to work. They ring anyway, but gave it a go. Land acknowledgement, acknowledge, we acknowledge that we are gathered on the traditional territory of indigenous peoples who have been stewards of the land since time immemorial. And as such, we treat the land, its plants, animals, stories, and peoples with honor and respect. Can have the playing of O Canada, please. Thank you. We'll have a moment of silence, please. Thank you. Um, my comments for today. So this Thursday, November 11th, marks our National Day of Remembrance for all of those who have served and sacrificed with their lives, who are or who have served, returned, and have departed since. We also recognize and thank those who continue to serve to protect our way of life and the freedom that we take for granted every day. We all see and read the news in profound amazement that the people of many countries are persecuted and imprisoned as they battle for the way of life that we view as commonplace. The sacrifices of the past have paved the way for how we live today and our efforts to create a better tomorrow. And for this, we thank them all. Well, it's very important to recognize this one day, November 11th, yesterday, November 8th, also marked a significant and separate day of remembrance, National Indigenous Veterans Day. This day was first commemorated in 1994, only 27 years ago, because before this time, Indigenous veterans were not recognized in Remembrance Day activities. Hard to comprehend, but true. As we continue our journey to right the wrongs of the past, let us not forget their contributions to our country and let us thank them for their sacrifice as well. While we take time to reflect on the contribution sacrifice made by all veterans, we forget the past and continue to educate and remind the many generations who have not been directly affected by the wars and peacekeeping, peacekeeping initiatives of the past. I'd like to thank our local legion, the museum, and the BBIA who have contribu contributed to keeping these memories alive through the veterans banners displayed throughout our town and the display at our local museum. In closing, we pay tribute to the veterans who are with us today and remember those who live on in spirit. We acknowledge their sacrifice and accept the responsibility to never take for granted the freedom that we enjoy today. Thank you. Uh, adoption of the open session agenda, be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Town of Bancroft is hereby approved of the open session agenda dated November 9th, 2021 as presented. Could I have a mover and a seconder, please? Moved by Councillor Caulfield, seconded by Councillor Barry McGibbon. All those in favour? Thank you. So now we have a public meeting. As required by the Planning Act, the purpose of the public meeting is to inform the public and hear representation in respect of proposed bylaw for the purpose of rezoning lands within the municipality. 
Those persons or public bodies who provide verbal submissions in respect of the proposed bylaw will be, will be requested to provide their name and address for recording in the minutes. Verbal submissions may be recorded in the minutes and will assist council in making a decision on a proposed bylaw. Applicants will be heard in the order in which they appear in the agenda. So be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of Town of Bancroft does hereby move into public meeting pursuant to the Planning Act for the purpose of hearing support and or objection for rezoning applications within the municipality. Can I have a mover and a seconder on that, please? Deputy Mayor and Councillor Wiggins, all in favor? Thank you. So the zoning bylaw amendment application 011-2021, owners are Sandra Adams and Christopher Shepard of 507 Holland Lake Road. The legal description is lots 16, 17, and 18, concessions 16, geographic township of Bancroft, now town of Bancroft, county of Hastings. The purpose of the proposed zoning bylaw amendment to the town of Bancroft's comprehensive zoning bylaw 27 dash 2006 is to satisfy condition number seven, a provisional consent for file number B7921 as follows, that the severed lands be rezoned from rural RU zone to rural residential RUR zone to recognize the reduced lot area and the proposed use. So at this time, we'll ask our uh, planning and development coordinator to present her report, please. Good afternoon, Your Worship, members of council, staff, and those viewing. Um, as the mayor mentioned, the purpose of the proposed zoning bylaw amendment is to satisfy condition number seven of provisional consent for file number B79-21 for the creation of a new lot. Uh, the re file received a provisional consent on September 13th, 2021. The severed and retained lands are currently zoned rural RU zone. The proposed severed lands are to be rezoned to the rural residential zone to recognize the proposed use and reduced lot area. The proposed retained lands are to remain zoned rural RU zone. And a key map is of the subject lands is attached to this report. The zone regulations for residential uses in the rural zone require a minimum lot area of 15 acres. The proposed severed lands are 1.14 acres in area. Therefore, the proposed severed lands are to be rezoned to the rural residential zone to recognize the reduced lot area. The minimum lot area in the rural residential zone is approximately one acre or 4,000 square meters. Once the consent has been finalized, the applicant intends to transfer the severed lands to a family member who plans to construct a single detached dwelling. Notice of the public meeting was circulated as prescribed by the Planning Act. The County of Hastings Senior Planner has offered no objection to the proposed rezoning. To date, no written submissions in respect of the proposed amendment have been received. The bylaw to amend the Town of Bancroft's comprehensive zoning bylaw has been drafted with support from the County of Hastings Planning and Development Department and is on today's agenda for consideration by Council. The zoning bylaw will satisfy Condition 7 of Provisional Consent for file number B79-21 and staff recommend that the proposed zoning bylaw amendment application be approved. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Robin. Is there any questions or clarification required from members of council? Seeing none, so at this time we'll have a call for public input. If a person or public body does not make a verbal submission at the public meeting or make written submission to council before the bylaw is passed, the person or public body may not be added as a party to the hearing of an appeal before the Ontario Land Tribunal unless in the opinion of the tribunal there are reasonable grounds to do so. So in opposition, Robin, you mentioned there is no there were no written submissions in That's opposition. That's correct. That's correct, Your Worship. No written submissions in opposition. Uh, Amber, do we have anybody who wants to make a verbal submission in opposition? There are none. There are none. Okay. Support. Are there any uh, written submissions in support of the proposed amendment, Robin? Just just the one written submission from the county offering no objection. Thank you. 
And there are, are there any uh, verbal submissions in support of the proposed amendment? No. Not Nothing? Right. Thank you. At this time, we'll adjourn from the public meeting, be resolved that the Council of the Corporation Town of Bancroft is hereby adjourned from public meeting and reconvene the regular meeting of council. Could I have a mover and a seconder on that, please? Councillor Barry McGibbon and Councillor Miles, all in favor? Thank you. So planning decision following public meeting, council's decision to refuse or pass an application to amend the zoning bylaw is to include a brief explanation of the effect, if any, that the written and verbal submissions related to the application had on the decision. So the motion that we have before us with respect to zoning bylaw amendment, bylaw amendment application 011-2021 is be it resolved that the council of the corporation of the town of Bancroft is hereby approve of zoning bylaw amendment application 011-2021 to rezone lands legally described as lot 16, 17, and 18, concession 16, geographic township of Dungannon, now town of Bancroft, county of Hastings, municipally known as 507 Holland Lake, uh, Holland Lake from rural RU zone to rural residential RUR zone. Could I have a mover and a seconder on that, please? Deputy Mayor, Councillor Wiggins, all in favor? All in favor? So passed, thank you. Um, next up on the agenda is the zoning bylaw amendment to regulate shipping containers. Uh, the motion before us is be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Town of Bancroft is hereby approved to amend the Town of Bancroft Comprehensive Zoning Bylaw number 27 dash 2006 as amended to define and regulate the location and use of shipping containers within the municipality. Could I have a mover and seconder to put this on the floor, please? Councillor Wiggins and second by Councillor Kaufeld. And who on staff is going to speak to this? Nobody? I can speak to this, Your Worship. <laughs> okay. uh, my uh, report uh, is attached. Uh, on, on October 26, uh, 2021, a public meeting under the Planning Act was held to inform the public and hear representation in respect of a proposed zoning bylaw amendment uh, to the Town of Bancroft's Comprehensive Zoning Bylaw Number 27, 2006, as amended, to provide a definition and to regulate the location and use of shipping containers within the municipality. The Purpose and effect of the amendment uh, will effectively regulate shipping containers to ensure that the aesthetic character of the municipality is maintained and to ensure that neighboring properties are not negatively impacted. Notice of the public meeting was circulated as prescribed by the Planning Act. And in advance of the public meeting, there was an email received on October 22nd, 2020 from Mr. Peter Penlington requesting clarification and offering feedback regarding the proposed zoning bylaw amendment. Staff responded to Mr. Penlington on October 25th via email and addressed all of his questions and concerns. At the public meeting, the Planning and Development Coordinator presented her report regarding the proposed uh, amendment to the members of the committee and members of the public. Following the report, the floor was opened up to members of the committee for questions and discussion. The discussion included the temporary use of shipping containers in all zones for construction purposes. It was suggested that the temporary use of shipping containers be better defined in the proposed zoning bylaw amendment. Section 3.36 of the zoning bylaw regulates temporary uses. Temporary uses are incidental to and necessary for construction work, which is authorized by a building permit. The provision in the proposed zoning bylaw amendment regarding the temporary use of shipping containers has been revised to provide clarity. Um, as noted, uh, the revision now reads as follows. The temporary use of shipping containers shall be in compliance with section 3.36 of bylaw number 27, 2006 as amended for construction authorized by a building permit. Alternatively, council may choose to prohibit the temporary use of shipping containers within the municipality. There was also a request to clarify the reference to non-operative machinery. 
The proposed zoning bylaw amendment that was presented during the public meeting provided that shipping containers shall only be used to store dry goods, materials, or non-operative machinery. To ensure that the zoning bylaw amendment is clear, the word non-operative has been replaced with the word inactive. There is similar wording used in the zoning bylaw, which relates to storage. There was also considerable discussion about the use of shipping containers for human habitation. The discussion included comments from a resident, Mr. Pendlington, who participated in the public meeting and was questioning whether the municipality would consider the use of shipping containers for human habitation. Currently, the proposed zoning bylaw amendment does not permit the use of shipping containers for human habitation. However, if an individual was wanting to modify a shipping container for use as a residential dwelling for human habitation, they may apply for a zoning bylaw amendment to seek relief from the zoning bylaw to permit the proposed use. In addition, there has been one other revision to the proposed amendment. Upon review, staff decided to remove the following provision. Shipping containers shall be prohibited on a lot adjacent to a zone permitting a residential use or a building use for human habitation or a community facility zone. Staff considered the provision particularly restrictive and unnecessary. The proposed amendment provides visual buffering requirements for shipping containers uh, through the section 3.4 uh, for buffer planting strips. And that is from all road frontages and buildings on adjacent lots. The location of a shipping container must also comply with the minimum setbacks provided for in the rural, commercial, and industrial zone classes. Staff believe that the required visual buffering and minimum setback regulations will ensure that neighboring residential land uses will not be negatively impacted. The removal of the provision will also likely reduce the number of anticipated zoning bylaw amendment applications. It uh, also could be addressed through site plan control uh, buffering from residential uses. During the public meeting, the call for written or oral submissions in support or opposition of the proposed zoning bylaw amendment was made. There were no written or oral submissions in support or opposition received at the public meeting. Written submissions relating to the proposed zoning bylaw amendment may be made to council before its decision. To date, no written submissions in respect of the amendment have been received. The bylaw to amend the town of Bancroft's uh, comprehensive zoning bylaw has been drafted with support from the County of Hastings Planning and Development Department and is on today's agenda for consideration by council. The proposed amendment complies and conforms with the Planning Act, the Provincial Policy Statement, the County of Hastings Official Plan, and the Comprehensive Zoning Bylaw as amended. Staff recommend that the proposed zoning bylaw amendment be approved. If approved, notice of passing of the amendment must be given in the prescribed manner no later than 15 days after the day the bylaw is passed. The bylaw shall come into full force and effect on the date of passing provided no notice of appeal is filed within 20 days of the date of giving of written notice of passing of the bylaw. In the event that an appeal is filed, the bylaw shall not come into full force and effect until all appeals are finally disposed of by the Ontario Land Tribunal. And that concludes my report, Your Worship. Thank you, Robin. Uh, any questions or comments from members of council? Uh, Councillor Wiggins, you're muted. I'd just like to thank, thank staff for all the, op the uh, effort they put into making this bylaw. It's been, it's been coming and uh, I appreciate what you've done. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wiggins. Anyone else? Seeing no one, all in favor, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, at this time we have a delegation from somebody who's definitely not a stranger to the area. I would like to welcome uh, Melanie uh, Cressman. Nice to see you again, Melanie. Thank you, uh, thank you. From the United Way, Hastings and Prince Edward. And uh, we will let you have the floor with your presentation. Thank you, Mayor Jenkins and the rest of Bancroft Council. I'm 
needless to say, a little bit excited to be here. It's so nice to, like, as I mentioned before, hop on a call and have some familiar faces and just a little bit of a little bit of love coming through the screen. So I, <laughs> I really appreciate you all. Um, I, I wonder if I might have permission to share my screen. It looks like I have that ability. You should be good. Okay. Can you just confirm that you're seeing my full screen? Yes. Okay. Very good. So this time of year, it's important for us to ensure that the community is aware of the work that United Way, Hastings and Prince Edward does as an organization. But more than that, the community, make sure the community is aware of the impact that donors make on this community that we all, that we all call home. As elected officials and staff of a rural municipality, I think it's sometimes easy to feel a bit removed from organizations like ours. So it's important that we take the time and the opportunities to raise awareness of the programs that we fund all over Hastings and Prince Edward. This year, we've chosen the umbrella as the symbol of our local love. Umbrellas protect you and shield you, they shade you, they give you comfort, and they're available to you if it rains, and they're available for you to share, hold over somebody else that might need the protection. You are all umbrellas. Everyone here is part of protecting this community, and you're a vital part of our community's ab ability to revive and thrive. United Way, Hastings and Prince Edward is an umbrella organization, one that provides support and funding to more than 51 local agencies and 93 programs within those agencies. And they really, really need us right now. Our campaign this year will be about continuing to work together, revive our community, recover from COVID-19 and enable so many of our friends and neighbors to shift from simply surviving to actually thriving. A bit of United Way 101 for those that may not know what our model looks like. We are perhaps best known as a fundraiser and a funder. We partner with hundreds of workplaces and thousands of individual donors each year, raise funds in an annual campaign, and then we allocate those funds to the not-for-profit charitable organizations in Hastings and Prince Edward counties. United Way mobilizes the community so that individual can make gifts, large or small, and know that they will contribute to a larger community fund that has an enormous impact on the lives of individuals in Hastings and Prince Edward. In fact, 70% of the $1.9 million raised in 2020 came from workplace campaigns, employee donations, corporate gifts, and special events. We are 100% local. All of the money that's raised in our community stays in our community. And while we're a member of United Way of Canada, our local United Way is autonomous. We have our own local board of directors, our own CRA charitable number, our own audited financial statements, and our own team of local volunteers that sit on the allocations committee and make funding decisions. All fundraised money stays local to help people in this community. And we often say that we're more like a home hardware than a home depot. We fundraise on behalf of more than 51 different agencies, meaning that those agencies do not need to have paid fundraisers on their staff. It allows them to dedicate their resources to what they do best, which is deliver programming. United Way launches an RFP process in the early fall, requesting applications for funding, and each and every year the requests far outstrip our resources. And just to give you an idea of the investments that are made in North Hastings, I know on your screen you're seeing a lot of different agencies. Um, the total investment in North Hastings as a result of the 2020 campaign was approximately $150,000. Investments, investments made in five North Hastings specific agencies. That's Care North Hastings, North Hastings Children's Services, North Hastings Community Cupboard, Bancroft Community Transit, and we also fund a counselor that's specific for North Hastings through the Sexual Assault Center. And in addition to those eight, to those five agencies that are North Hastings specific, there are another eight agencies that have an, a Hastings Prince Edward mandate and cover the catchment area, Big Brothers Big Sisters, John Howard Society, Community Development Council, Canadian, Canadian National Institute for the Blind, the Canadian Hearing Society, the Sexual Assault Center, Quinty Transit, and Volunteer and Information Quinty. In addition to those agencies, we also issued over $700,000 in emergency community support funds last year during COVID. 
over $100,000 in small grants across the region, and over 24 tons of food to 20 different food banks, including Bancroft, including Maynooth, including Cohill, and meal programs, and 925 cases of diapers, wipes, and hygiene products to 33 different organizations. And as well, our youth to youth program engaged youth from the North Hastings community. Here's a familiar picture. And I always throw this in when I do a campaign, particularly if, I've, particularly if I'm talking to people from Bancroft. So as many of you may know, I operated my business in the area for just shy of 20 years. And I had the privilege of being the host farm for an organization called Equine Assisted Living and Learning, a therapeutic horseback riding for people of all abilities. And this picture is of a horse that lived at our facility named Jenny, who that was short for generosity. And Jenny was the very first animal purchased for the Equal program. She was purchased with a one-time small grant from United Way. She went on to give hundreds and hundreds of individuals the opportunity to thrive through a sport that they may otherwise not have had the opportunity to participate in. I mean, the, the therapeutic benefits of horseback riding is an entire presentation in itself. Um, but let me tell you for sure that I have witnessed firsthand the goodness that a United Way funded program has made in Bancroft. So programs that are being funded by United Way must fall within one if not more than one of our three pillars of focus. And the first pillars of, pillar of focus is helping kids be all that they can be. We know that our area, our region has lower than average on, high, on time high school graduation rates. And we know that we have higher than provincial averages for out migration rates where youth are leaving the community and not returning to work or live. We also have higher than provincial rates for teenage pregnancies. United Way funded programs were there during the pandemic when children that are food insecure at home and look forward to breakfast at school suddenly didn't have that opportunity because schools were closed. And United Way, fund, United Way funded programs found ways to stay connected with youth that rely on the social structure of after school programming for mentorship and fellowship. And you know, when we look at some of the numbers on the screen and we don't have time to go through all of them, but just the mere fact that there were over 27,000 visits to a youth drop-in center. It tells us that the youth are using our programs and they're, they're, they're really um, thriving as a result of it. United Way, Hastings Center, Prince Edward is giving kids and youth the support they need to get a great start in life, to do well in school and reach their full potential. The second pillar of focus is moving, helping people to move from poverty to possibility. We know that our region owns some unfavorable statistics in the areas of employment, food security, and housing. United Way helps individuals to find meaningful employment, manage expenses, and support their families through job skills and financial literacy programs. Continue, Hastings Prince Edward continues to experience some high rates of food insecurity. Um, and we're working hard to increase access to nutritious and affordable foods through programs like Community Development Council's Good Food Program and other meal programs in the area. United Way funds programs that are helping people who are homeless or at risk of homelessness to not only find a home, but to sustain that housing. And the, the statistic that just, you know, is staggering on the slide right now is that 8,760 nights accommodation in transitional housing. That's a direct result of United Way funded programming. And the final pillar, building strong communities. Um, this year has highlighted the importance of helping our seniors live at home safely. The pandemic shone a light on how quickly a person can shift from independence to being vulnerable. And I can tell you from firsthand during the first wave when, you know, everybody was being told to stay home and offices were closing, our office was amping up and our staff team had to be here because the phones rang constantly. And if I had to put a number on it, I would say probably 85% of those calls were from seniors that just didn't know where to turn they had never had to ask for help before. And all of a sudden they were being told to stay home. They were being told it wasn't safe for their families to visit and bring them groceries. It was a really scary time for people. And our staff team alone did, uh, we started a shopping and delivery service for groceries and medical uh, prescriptions. And we did over 600 deliveries during that time. Now, since then we have shifted those programs and we're now funding um, programs to take that frontline approach. And we're happy to say that Belleville Community Trans, or sorry, Bancroft Community Transit is one of those uh, funded agencies that's helping with that program. 
Our reach in the community goes far beyond the financial resources we can provide. We're also a community impact organization, ensuring the social sector has access to networks for sharing and learning and data to measure success and community need. We're a lead agency that facilitates collaborative work and that addresses some of our biggest challenges. We have, no, we have the knowledge required to help agencies build their capacity as service providers. 2020 was a remarkable year in so many ways, and some were better than others, for sure. United Way had a record-breaking fundraising year. Between the annual fundraising campaign and the specialized COVID-19 Community Relief Fund, $2.5 million were raised. Our community felt compelled to help their neighbors and friends and fellow community members. It was humbling, to say the least. The pandemic, however, wreaked havoc across the country and province, as we know, uh, and our communities were affected. As a direct result of the economic shutdown, there was a significant, a significant pressure placed on the not-for-profit sector. The federal government did allocate a $350 million emergency community support fund to address those pressures. And as you may have heard, they partnered with United Way of Canada to act as an intermediary to distribute funding to community agencies. Our United Way distributed over $700,000 on behalf of the Government of Canada. Those funds were specific to the last fiscal year and could only be utilized to support pandemic-related expenses. There was no ongoing operational or stabilization funding available. So interestingly enough, when we pulled those agencies that received money, only 33% of agencies in our area who received those government funds reported adequate financial support from the government. 53% indicated they were only somewhat supported. There just wasn't enough to go around. So we're here to ask for your support. We ask that each of you considers the fact that most of us are only a paycheck away from needing a United Way Hastings and Prince Edward funded program. In fact, statistics tell us that one in four people in our community will access a United Way funded program at some point in their life. Whether it's a parent needing the support of a program like Meals on Wheels, a neighbor needing transportation to work, someone who needs emergency financial support because they had a major car repair and now they can't pay their hydro bill. We all know someone that's needed a hand up and that's what United Way does for our friends, neighbors, family, and colleagues. We all need this campaign to be successful. So that's why we're here. Not just to ask for financial support, that to be honest, financial support isn't the reason why I'm here. It's to ask you to be advocates for the United Way campaign. It's to ask you to talk about United Way in your circles and to spread maybe some something that you've learned today with your friends and neighbors. And in return, we make these promises to our donors to remain in touch. Our community impact team sits at the table with experts and program deliverers across the county and provincially to make sure that we have our finger on the pulse of where the highest needs are in the community and we will remain hyper-local to help make sure people in our community have the supports in place that they need. And finally, to report back to you through CRA audited financial statements, our annual report, and open door policy for anybody wanting to learn more about United Way and the impact being made in our community. And the very last thing that I'll leave you with is just the Morrison Marilyn, Marilyn Rollins Foundation Friends and Leaders Challenge. And this is just an incentive for anybody that may be in a position to donate at the $500 level. Any donations received between $500 and $1199 are matched at 50%. And any donations at the leadership level, which is $1,200 or more are matched at 100%. And we thank the, Mar the Morrison Marilyn Rollins Foundation for that incentive. With that, I'm going to stop sharing and I would be more than happy to answer any questions that you might have about United Way or about the impact that our donors are having. Well, thank you, Melanie, uh, for that presentation and thank you for the work that the United Way does. Uh, we all hear the stories of, uh, through our community of uh, what is supported. So we appreciate that. So uh, anybody in council have a, a comment or a question for, uh, for Melanie? this time. Uh, so, uh, Andra. Yeah, Melanie, um, thanks for coming today. And I just, I wanna echo what the mayor said. You know, we, we all know people that have benefited from United Way programs and um, the last year and a bit has been extremely challenging for people who never thought they'd be challenged the way they have. So uh, it's been wonderful to have the support of the programs in our community. So thank you for all you do. 
Very welcome. Very welcome. Councillor Wiggins. I just wondered, uh, a lot of the programs you you uh, sponsor or whatever, which is great, uh, appear some of them also done by the county. Is there a, a meshing with you guys or are you dancing different streets or what? No, actually quite the opposite. One of the mandates of United Way is that we don't, we actually don't fund any programs in totality. So we don't fund 100% of anything. Our mission is to help agencies become sustainable and to help and to make sure that their programs can get up and running on their own. Um, so our our hope, our, we're only just a piece of the puzzle. A lot of times United, um, agencies that get United Way funding, they'll actually use their United Way funding as leverage for other money that's out there and other grants that's out there. So it's really a combination of, you know, everybody working together. Um, where as far as and, and just to understand how our allocations process works and how that decision making is done, we have a community team of about 35 volunteers that decide where funding is allocated. And that that team is made up of regular people with a variety of skill sets. And anybody that's on this call could be a member of that allocations team. They comb through hundreds and hundreds of of. Um, requests that we get for funding. They study their financial statements. They look at their government, their governance structures to make sure that they're sound. Uh, they make sure that the programs that they're wanting funding for have measurable activity and that there's proof through the data that people, that, that the program is needed and that people will be helped by it. So through all of that, we're, we're able to confidently fund programs just at the portion that they're asking for. But as I said, it's never 100% of the program. Um, the programs are expected to seek other sources of funding and also not as not to have all your eggs in one basket, so to speak. Thank you, anyone else? So again, Melanie, thank you very much for the presentation and uh, nice to see you again. And, Thank you um, very much. Yes. yes. Good to see everybody. Have a great day. Okay, take care. So motion we have before us is be it resolved the Council of the Corporation of the Town of Bancroft is hereby receive the presentation from United Way Hastings and Prince Edward as presented. Could I have a mover and a seconder, please? Councillor Miles, Councillor Tracy McGibbon, all in favor? Thank you. Uh, item nine, minutes of uh, previous sessions, be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of Town of Bancroft is hereby approve of the minutes of the meetings of council held on October 12, 2021 and October 26, 2021 as presented. Could I have a mover and a seconder, please? Uh, Councillor Caulfield, Councillor Wiggins, is there any uh, errors, omissions, comments or questions on those? Seeing none, all in favor, please? Thank you. Minutes of standing committees and verbal updates, uh, building property and bylaw committee. Uh, we have a couple of res draft resolutions. First one is uh, be resolved the Council of the Corporation of Town of Bancroft is hereby approve of the minutes of the building property and bylaw committee meeting held on October 26, 2021 as presented. Could I have a mover and a seconder please? Councillor Wiggins, Councillor Miles, Councillor Wiggins, would you like to talk to these, please? Uh, yes, uh, it's a our, our building and bylaw is, is striving ahead on various points. We're trying to isolate and and work on individual ones. One of the first ones that we've uh, I can thank uh, the committee for is uh, working with staff to get our container bylaw, which we just made uh, pass. So that was one of the big things we moved ahead on. Um, we're also looking at a program uh, which is going to be brought up to the next meeting, which is a, a way of, of uh, tracing, uh, uh, I'll say, fines or whatever going forward. Um, we're uh, looking at a no number of security cameras still are a big issue. We're, we're dealing with our fire chief on that. He's got a couple proposals to move forward on that, so he's working on it. Uh, we're also working on a way of uh, trying to track or uh, keep track of uh, uh, property standards issues. There are a number of little issues going uh, where we're uh, diligently working on and uh, trying to move the town forward on that. Questions, I'd try to answer them. 
Thank you. Are there any questions or comments on that? So uh, one, and it relates for me, uh, Councilor Wiggins, and it relates to the uh, next draft resolution with respect to security cameras. Uh, I believe that our, my understanding was that we asked the fire chief to, uh, to just uh, pause on that for a moment while we saw what technology was gonna be used with respect to uh, uh, what's going on with the Main Street reconstruction. Is that your um, understanding as well? That is my understanding. We want to, so when we move ahead with the downtown, uh, I'll call it revitalization, uh, uh, we want to make the town smart and part of that will be the cameras. So we want to make sure they're all compatible. Uh, okay. So just sit on it for a bit. Having said that, there are some issues that we might be able to do something temporary with, but uh, anyway, that's another issue. Okay, thank you. So all in favor? Thank you. So the next re resolution we have is be it resolved the council authorizes the fire chief in consultation with the downtown committee to proceed with security camera placement in Millennium Park and further that the additional security camera placement projects be part of the 2022 uh, budget deliberations. Could I have a mover and a seconder on that please? Councillor Wiggins and Councillor Miles. So Councillor Wiggins, your understanding of that's directing it to do what we just talked about, the fire chief to do what we just talked about and uh, before he proceeds. Is yes, that how you read that? Yeah, that's how I read that. And I believe that uh, was a direction to okay. with the uh, downtown uh, committee so that whatever we do will enhance and work in partnership with that committee rather than go off on our own tangent. So uh, I'm quite sure you'll work with that. There will be uh, a certain amount of expense so we've asked him to make sure that that's in the proposed 2022 budget collaboration. So I believe we're on board on this. It's, uh, but in the meantime, uh, we'll keep moving on it. But yes, he's supposed to tie in with the other group. Thank you. Any other comments or questions from members of council on this? Seeing none, all in favor, please. So passed, thank you. Next one is Committee of the Whole. Be it resolved, the Council of the Corporation, the Town of Bancroft, to serve by approve of the minutes of Committee of the Whole meeting held on October 2026 as presented. Could I have a mover and a seconder, please? Councillor Miles, seconded by Councillor Barry McGibbon. Are there any comments or questions on that? Most will probably be covered in the following resolutions. Seeing none, all in favor, please. Thank you. The next resolution pertaining to that, uh, the committee of holes be it resolved that council authorized the corporation of the town of Bancroft to be part of a joint request for proposal with municipal members in Hastings County for electronic voting services for the 2022 municipal election. Could I have a mover and a seconder on that, please? Councillor Miles, Councillor Caulfield, any comments or questions? Seeing none, all in favor, please. Thank you, pass. Next one we have is be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Town of Bancroft is hereby adopt the following schedule for the 2022 Council and Committee meetings. Could I have a mover and a seconder on that, please? Uh, Deputy Mayor, uh, Councillor Tracy McGibbon, all in favor of that, please? So pass, thank you. Oh, I missed part of that, which just says infer that Council is hereby approved that all meetings for 2022 be held electronically until further notice, but I'm sure everybody had read that beforehand. Next resolution be it resolved that council approved the closure of the town office from noon on Friday, December 24, 2021 to 8.30 a.m. on Tuesday, January 4th, 2022. Could I have a mover and a second on that, please? Councillor Miles and yawning Councillor Tracy McGibbon. <laughs> Sorry, I had to get that in. Uh, all, all in favor, please. Thank you. Next is uh, be it resolved the council approve the winter maintenance policy as presented. Could I have a mover and a seconder, please? Councillor Wiggins, seconded by Councillor Barry McGibbon. All in favor? Thank you. Next is be it resolved, the council approved that the manager of public works upgrade the 2019 Ford F-250 gas engine to a 2022 Chevrolet 2500 series diesel truck for the public 
Works Department. Um, could I have a mover and a seconder on that, please? Councillor Barry McGibbon, Councillor Tracy McGibbon. Um, I, I think the only thing that I'm puzzled on is I think that is part of the 2022 uh, budget. Is that your budget? Is that correct, uh, Perry Kelly? Uh, good afternoon, Your Worship and members of council. Yes, that is correct. Okay, thank you. So all in favor? Thank you, so pass. Uh, and last but not least, be it resolved that council approve the landfill tipping fee schedule and pricing as presented. Could I have a mover and a seconder on that, please? Moved by Councillor Miles, seconded by anybody? Deputy Mayor, and all in favor? Thank you, passed. Next is the Bancroft Community Safety and Wellbeing Committee, October 27th. Be it resolved that Council of the Corporation of the Town of Bancroft is hereby approve of the minutes of the Bancroft Community Safety and Wellbeing Meeting held on October 27th, 2021, as presented. Mover, please. Uh, Deputy Mayor, you'd like to move that? And sure. Councillor Wigan second it. So, Deputy Mayor, would you like to speak to that? Uh, actually, I'll, uh, since, since uh, Councillor Wigan chaired the meeting and I wouldn't have to be there, I, I'd ask him to report, please. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Uh, anyway, it was, uh, it was again uh, enlightening. Uh, the highlight of our meeting was we had Lisa Handel Beckett, I believe is the proper pronunciation, which is. Uh, the uh, contact for the mobile um, injection unit to give us an update. Uh, to date, they are still looking at funds uh, and also government approval to do it. Uh, they still haven't got per se location they want to set up, which will, uh, will lead to some discussion in the future. Um, just for ones that know, um, the, the when it's going, it's up and going. The clients that use it will come and bring their own drugs. They won't be supplied by the, the unit, and they will also get medical other medical issues att attested to. Um, uh, the other thing was discussed, and it was a little bit later, but we had uh, Purple Day to show support for the uh, vulnerable children. That was uh, discussed and, and uh, recognized. Uh, Halloween has came and went, and as far as I know, the, there was no instance I haven't heard of a lot. I do see a, a bit of a rise in the COVID numbers, but I'm not sure if it was contributed to Halloween or not. Um, I don't see much else there other than just the cost of uh, policing uh, was brought forward for 22. Uh, just so you have an idea, the cost per house is going to be $569.04 per household in the town of Bancroft to match their uh, the cost for policing for our community in 2022. Any other questions I'd try to, I'd try to, or Paul, have you got any comments? You were there also. Well, on the police costing, um, the uh, treasurer distributed some information and where we really get uh, skewed, I said skewed, um, is, on the uh, calls for service portion, when you look at some adjacent municipalities, because we're a hub community, um, our calls for service are high and the costs that are attributed to that are extremely high. So we've lobbied on it in the past and we will continue to do so in the future. The only other thing I thought, uh, maybe Charles, if you just wanted to mention the uh, upcoming meeting we're having regarding Millennium Park. Yeah, yes, if I may. Uh... We're getting together with the uh, with the OPP. Uh, obviously, we've had some issues uh, in Millennium Park as well. The uh, the Children's Center have, have had some major issues there where they've called the police. So uh, we're going to get together with uh, the staff sergeant uh, next week, early next week, with uh, and with the uh, uh, Miss Anderson, and uh, hopefully we can come up to some. Some kind of a way and ways and means of of alleviating uh, the concern that they are having down there, there in the park. So, uh, especially now that it's being used by young people uh, daily, it's uh, it's been a uh, it's become a real issue. Thank you. Any other comments or questions on this one? 
Seeing none, all in favor, please. Thank you. Uh, Downtown Enhancement Committee be resolved the Council of the Corporation of the Town of Bancroft is hereby approved in the minutes of the Downtown Enhancement Committee meeting held on October 27, 2021 is presented. Could I have a mover, please? Councillor Coffeld, you'll move that, and Councillor Miles will second, and Councillor Coffeld, would you like to sort of bring us up to speed on that? So the, there was only one topic on the agenda for that meeting, and that was to get an update um, from Perry and Malcolm with regard to the plans for the downtown development. Um, there were some delays, um, systemic and otherwise, that uh, kind of stopped some forward momentum. So um, we seem to have things back on track and are moving forward. Uh, and we are hopeful that uh, in the very near future, we'll have something to bring back to council as an update uh, with where things are going or where we're hoping they're going to go with the development downtown. We will be meeting again uh, next week, in the next week, I think, uh, in the next week or week and a half uh, to keep that momentum moving and, and keep making that forward progress. So uh, lots happening and more to come. Thank you. Any comments or questions? Seeing none, all in favor, please. Thank you. Uh, minutes of local boards and joint committees. First one is Eastern Ontario Trails Alliance. Be resolved that Council of the Corporation of Town of Bancroft does hereby receive the minutes of the Eastern Ontario Trails Alliance meeting held on September 9th, 2021 as presented. Councillor Wiggins, you will move that? I will. Seconder, please. Councillor Tracy McGibbon, Councillor Wiggins, would you like to speak to that, please? Uh, yes, uh, we, it was a, another well-attended meeting with just a lot of the mundane running of the trails. However, we're uh, certainly working hard on, on keeping the trails safe for everyone to use and, and to draw in tourism to the north. Um, one of the biggest items we're working on there right now is our Moira Mori Lake Bridge. Uh, just by Madoff, and that is, I believe, going to open very shortly. I know it's working. That's a, a great example of uh, shift between the EOTA, the Snowville Association, uh, and the province and the feds to get that done. That, that was a uh, an awful expensive bridge uh, with a lot of funds uh, required to make it go. I believe it was over a million dollars. Um, other than that, it's it's. Uh, just moving ahead, as as uh, we say, uh, the last meeting uh, was September. Oh, sorry, it's a month ahead too. Anyway, it's tough when they're actually two months behind to, to report on them. But uh, we do have a meeting coming up next week, and we'll keep moving forward. Uh, we're still in uh, talking with OFATV regarding uh, uh, some kind of compromise moving forward with stations. Uh, other than that, there's just highlights. Any questions I can give you, I'll answer if, I, if you have any. Any questions for Councillor Wiggins? Seeing none, all in favor, please. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is North Hastings Community Centre Arena Commission. Be resolved that the Council of the Corporation of Town of Bancroft is hereby received the minutes of the North Hastings Community Centre Arena Commission meeting held on October 13, 2021 as presented. Councillor Miles, you'll move that. I will. Seconder, please. Uh, Councillor Caulfield. Councillor Miles, would you like to speak on that? Or were you at that meeting? Uh, I was unable to be there. So Councillor Wiggins, uh, he was a busy guy this past month. He also, uh, <laughs> covered, he also covered for me as uh, I was attending to some family business. Uh, so if you want to comment, Wayne, go for it. Uh, sure. Again, uh, moving ahead, they're, they're, they're doing a great job running our, uh, running our local facilities for our children to to have a place to play hockey, et cetera. Um, a couple of things, uh, I guess, come out of that meeting is uh, uh, Pizza More downtown. They're going to be running the canteen tarp uh, at the arena for the Junior A uh, games and, and other special games that happen along at, at a uh, set of the um, they now, th at that meeting, they also set up the screening for COVID for the use of the arena. Uh, you must show your uh, double vaccinated and ID for anyone uh, 12 and above. 
Uh, that was the transition uh, over a bit of a period because at the start uh, they had a little different uh, uh, program than we did. Um, the one other thing, yeah, they have, they do have a new a new uh, part time worker there. Uh, it was taken on Cody McDonald was his, uh, was a new 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 individual. Um, what else have I got? Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, uh, part of the COVID, there's uh, we had uh, through uh, the town applied for and got a a, a grant uh, for dates. And our arena manager Ron has prepared our RFPs to go out uh, for uh, three of them to be done. I believe it's part of a hundred K grant. Uh, there is some electrical, uh, there is some uh, plumbing uh, items uh, where they're trying to make them hands-free, et cetera. So uh, there'll be uh, some improvements coming uh, COVID related, uh, thanks to our government on that. Um, again, <laughs> That's about it. Any, any questions, I'm glad to try to answer them. Well, you, the only other thing you may want to mention, Wayne, is that we have two other grants pending with respect to the arena that we're waiting to hear on. Yes, we did. Uh, sorry about that. Yes, there are two other grants. Uh, we're working, uh, the town is working hard with the, uh, with the uh, arena board uh, to try and, and uh, develop a uh, proper gym upstairs in the, uh, in the community room. Well, and uh, but we need some grants. We need improvements. The main thing we need is an elevator. So the town is working hard on that to get some kind of a device to assist it to make it fully uh, handicap accessible. So uh, we're working hard on that, and hopefully sooner rather than later we can have uh, more news on that. Thank you. Any questions on that? Seeing none. All in favor, please. Thank you, pass. Next one is the, uh, hang on a sec here, Bancroft Business Improvement Area Annual General Meeting, be it resolved the Council of the Corporation of Town of Bancroft is hereby receive the minutes of the Bancroft Business Improvement Area Annual General Meeting held on October 29, 2020 as presented. Councilor Caulfield, you can, you'll move that. And seconder, please. Councillor Barry McGibbon, Councillor Caulfield, would you like to speak to that, please? Sure. So the AGM was held on October 29th. Uh, we had several guest speakers in the lineup, and we did have some um, folks attending the AGM virtually with us. So that was nice. Uh, Katie Stewart spoke about the Digital Service Squad uh, and the grants available to businesses uh, in downtown areas to get digital. digital pardon me. Um, Kay Matthews also um, spoke um, about uh, the value of BIAs and um, um, that, that was last year, but um, <clears throat> that was revisited as well. Um, Malcolm and Perry presented a report about um, uh, the downtown redevelopment, sorry. <laughs> um, and we also had uh, Mayor Jenkins with some comments um, about uh, the town and the direction things are going. So really, it was a really positive meeting to ramp up um, interest in the downtown and what's happening and what will be happening over the next year. And uh, I think it was pretty well received. Of course, the budget was also presented. Um, there's very, very little change to the budget. It's pretty much status quo from the previous budget. Although there is an exciting project that the BBIA has earmarked this year for a large mural uh, on one of the buildings in the downtown uh, core. So um, that was particularly pointed out at the meeting. I'm happy to answer any questions if you have any that aren't, uh, haven't already been done. Uh, are there any questions for anyone? No, nope, not for anyone, for Andre. Um, <laughs> seeing that, all in favor, please. So pass, thank you. Okay, unfinished business, we have none. Uh, first item on business, Bancroft Business Improvement Area Budget be resolved the Council of the Corporation of Town of Bancroft is hereby approve of the Bancroft Business Improvement Area 2022 budget as presented. Could I have a mover and a seconder on that, please? Councillor Caulfield, you'll move that. Councillor Miles and, uh, nope, it's not coming up there. So 
questions from anybody are on the budget. And Councillor Wiggins, if you would just hold one second here, I got to go to a different device because I wanted to move. Uh, there it is. Open it up. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead, Councillor Wiggins. You have a question. The only question is, if I look at the, the uh, numbers as proposed budget, uh, the numbers don't add up to me. Uh, it, I'm quite sure. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure why. It shows an expense of uh, 32000 and an income of uh, 68000 And So you see there, the, the levy shows 68621 it shows some other sources of uh, funds, uh, which is that a, uh, I guess that brings it up to, is that an eight, 82,771, I'm guessing. Uh, it's a little fuzzy on mine here, but it, as Councillor Wiggins mentioned, when you go down to the bottom, uh, oh, okay, so maybe that's, there's the matching number down there, Wayne, the 82,771. Is that an, is that an eight at the bottom? Oh, I thought it was a three. I thought it was a three as well, but I'm thinking that's supposed to be an eight. What does anybody else tell us here? It's actually a nine. <laughs> oh, a nine. <laughs> I guess if we add it at the top there, yeah, uh, I, I, I couldn't even add it. So that makes sense. Sure? <laughs> 16, I don't know. Is that even adding up? Or is that a, under what's the HST recoverable number? Is that a three or is that a nine or what is that? That's kind of uh, I think also a nine. <laughs> if that's a nine, okay, so 24. It adds up. Okay, now it's making sense. So I think yeah. okay, I was the same with you, Wayne. I thought. I couldn't, I thought that was a, well, I thought it was a three and then I thought it was an eight and then find out it's a nine, so. Neither one. Uh, Councillor. There's Council a song Miles. called something like that. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, a sim maybe a simple font change would be helpful for us. Yeah. <laughs> well, I believe this is there, not ours. That's been I agree, yeah. but maybe we could ask them for a simple font change so it's not so funky. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the numbers are matching in the end. So, okay. Good job, Audrey. You did it. <laughs> uh, I can't take credit for that. <laughs> I'm just trying to see there. Um, you see the mural in there, which I'm glad to see. Okay, I see the project there as well. Okay. Okay, uh, Councillor Miles. Have they designated a location yet, Andra? Um, yes, but I don't know if I can say that here yet. I think they're still working on the letters of understanding with the property owner, but it will be um, right in the core and very, very visible. Thank you. Anybody else? Seeing none, all in favor, please. So passed, thank you. Uh, okay, so on to our next item of business here, which is the resignation of uh, Councillor Kaufelt from Council. So before we get to that, we'd all like to congratulate Councillor Kaufelt on her uh, successfully um, um, winning the job for the town's general manager. Um, it was a very long process. Uh, uh, Councillor uh, Deputy Mayor Mullet and uh, Treasurer uh, Bill Davy and, and myself, we sat on the committee. Uh, we had over 50 applications. I think it was 55-ish, Amber. I think it was in that neighborhood, if I can remember. Uh, 60? Yeah. yeah, very high. Um, we held quite a number of interviews and... Um, Councillor uh, Kaufeld was uh, totally blind to the whole process. And I think she probably wondered what we, was going on because it took so long, uh, but there was a lot, uh, a lot to evaluate and, um, and, um, and the interview process was uh, fairly detailed and lengthy. So uh, again, thank you. But as a result of that, we have the following resolution and, and I shall read it. It says, be resolved the Council of the Corporation of the town of Bancroft is hereby receive and accept Councillor Andra Kaufel's resignation from council dated November 3rd, 2021 and effective November 24th, 2021 as presented. So uh, I'm assuming you can move your own resignation, uh, Councillor Kaufel, is there, <laughs> yes? 
Amber's shaking her head yes, so you so you can move that. And uh, a seconder, please. Councillor uh, Miles and um, Councillor Kaffa, would you like to say anything at this time? Um, I have really enjoyed and learned so much on my time on council for the last three years, pretty much exactly. Um, so a lot of that has helped to prepare me for this new transition. And I'm absolutely thrilled that I'm going to get to continue to work with all of you, uh, as well as all of our staff more closely to continue to propel the town forward and capitalize on the amazing momentum we have right now with growth and development and opportunities that uh, just keep knocking on the door. It seems like almost every week there's a new one coming around. So um, I can't wait to get started and uh, your trust is well placed in me and I will prove that to you every day as soon as I get my butt in the chair. So thank you so much for that. Thank you and congratulations. So I guess we have to accept it. So all in favor, please. So passed, thank you. Uh, we also have a vacant seat report. I'll read the resolution. Be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of Town of Bancroft is hereby received a vacant seat report for information purposes, which is to be considered when determining a method to fill the vacant Town of Bancroft Council seat due to the resignation of Council Andrew Kaufeld effective as of November 24th, 2021. Could I have a mover and a seconder, please? Councillor Miles, seconded by. Councillor Tracy McGibbon, and just give me one sec because I do need, I wanna bring that up because I did have a question on this. And so, uh, Amber, would you like to go through this for us, please? So today's vacant seat report is for information and to be considered uh, determining the method to fill the uh, vacant councillor seat due to Councillor Caulfield's uh, resignation effective November 24th. Um, when the seat becomes vacant, council is required to declare the seat vacant and must determine whether the seat will be filled by a by-election or an appointment. If a by-election is chosen to fill the vacancy, a by-election will be held in accordance with the uh, Municipal Elections Act. If the vacancy is filled by appointment, the vacancy will be filled within or should be filled within 60 days of declaring the vacancy. So council just let me ask, is... is, is are we declaring it today? So, or is it when, the resignation date? No. Um, so we will we will declare after the resignation date. So okay. Next, so we're no, not declaring today. No, we are not. Thank you. Sorry about that. Continue. Yeah. No problem. Um, so, so once it's declared, um, resolution resolution should be um, a pass to for the appointment process that uh, council is going to take. And uh, to be considered for an appointment to fill the council vacancy, an eligible elector is required to complete and sign a declaration of qualification and a consent to appointment letter. Um, so there are no major financial implications of filling it by an appointment. However, there would be uh, significant costs associated with a by-election and it was not budgeted for in the 2021 operating budget. Thank you. Is there any questions from anybody? Seeing none, all in favor of receiving, please. Pass, thank you. Okay, next item D, contract for services agreement between the Town of Bancroft and the Royal Canadian Legion. Be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Town of Bancroft is hereby approved the Town of Bancroft to enter into a full service agreement with the Royal Canadian Legion Branch 181 for parking lot use as a municipal parking lot. Could I have a mover and a seconder on that, please? Councillor Wiggins, seconded by Councillor Kaufeld. And at this time, I'm just going to get it up myself here. I would ask Perry Kelly to discuss this, please. Uh, good afternoon, Mayor Jenkins, uh, members of council and staff and people watching. Uh, this is... Uh, an agreement that uh, it will be superseding the uh, original agreement that was with the Royal Canadian Legion in the town of Bancroft, but it's based more on doing uh, parking lot maintenance, where this one is a little bit more involved, where uh, we have, myself, uh, have had conversations with the Royal Canadian Legion and have their uh, their blessing and agreements that uh, the town of Bancroft would uh, would be allowed to use the center portion of the Legion parking lot. So to the east 
uh, in between the Legion and Jug City of approximately 30 parking spaces for municipal per, uh, parking. Um, this agreement will run um, conclusively. Um, I have to check to see if we put an end date on it, to be honest with you. Sorry. I don't think you did. Uh, no, I don't think we did either. That, that's not a bad thing. <laughs> um, so this basically uh, uh, will allow the town of Bancroft to designate the center parking lot, which uh, if you have it up on your uh, computers there, uh, of the drawing that is attached to the agreement itself in the agenda. The center red area is marked from south to north, um, adjacent to the easterly uh, boundary of the Legion parking lot. Um, I believe just counting because there are no yellow marks there and staff will put the yellow pavement markings in next spring, we would accommodate in the ballpark of about 30 parking spaces. Uh, Legion members are uh, very content with this arrangement. Um, the trade-off is that the municipality will be doing uh, year-round annual maintenance uh, on the parking lot as we have done in previous years. Uh, but this way here now the town of Bancroft has a little bit more of a benefit out of it, uh, uh, so to speak. So. In speaking with the president of the uh, the Legion, uh, going over the uh, the agreement in detail, um, as you can see in this report, uh, the gentleman has signed, and I have witnessed his signature. And I just wanted to bring it here today for uh, council discussion and approval. So, Perry, I have one question. So, up on the map that you're showing there, I, I guess it looks like the uh, the, bound, the the boundary of the parking lot closest to the uh, I guess it's the former Jug City. I don't think it's called Jug City anymore, but I think it always has that name now. Is, is that the actual property line right there uh, of the Legion property, or do we know, Mr. Mayor? That is going off of the GIS mapping. Um, Looking at the parking lot itself uh, from a street view, there is parking up against the east side of the the old Jug City building or whatever it is, and there's a driving lane in between uh, their parking spaces and the parking spaces that the Legion own. So this is just uh, in proximity, this map, but it, uh, it definitely encompasses the two center parking spaces, like that center lane parking spaces, right from the south to the north of the parking lot. So I guess my follow-up question to that is when it comes to snow plowing, um, how do you, where do you stop and where do you start with, since you have this sort of area that blends into each other uh, against the, the old Jug City? The parking lot is usually plowed uh, in sequence with whoever is plowing the Jug City. I believe Dave Laundry or Chris Laundry is doing it. So. He's either there just before we get there or he is there after we are and we use the grader or, or the big loader. So we just go ahead and make our swipe um, starting roughly about the same spot every time and they come in and clean up either behind us or we clean up behind them. So it, it actually works quite well and we shove all the snow to the back of the parking lot uh, next to the RJ Brooks and then uh, it gets removed through snow removal. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, oh, sorry. The Deputy Mayor, go ahead. Yes, uh, I just got one question. Looking at the agreement, I don't see a, a note that somebody wanted, like if the Legion wanted to get out of that for some reason or another. It, and usually there is. Uh, just wanted to, I didn't see that. And uh, maybe somebody else saw it, but I, uh, I didn't see that. And usually there's something in the agreement that, you know, both parties can, can uh, with, with agreement between the two, can get out of it. I don't think that's an issue. I don't think anybody wants to get out of it, but if something come up and, and they sold that building, then the new owners may not want it. Who knows? Um, yeah, that's a very good point. Um, I would I would suspect I don't really want to uh, go back to the uh, the Legion with this uh, with this agreement. I think uh, we will just keep an eye on things and then um, Maybe we could just uh, say that uh, before, if there is a potential sale, then we'll end the agreement with uh, with the president of the Legion at that time. 
Okay. Well, yeah, did. Just, I just wanted to mention that that was the only concern I had. Great to have that parking lot. Thanks, Barry. Yeah. I think I think we need to have a clause, Perry. Whether you do an addendum to this or something of that nature, uh, I, I do believe we need something in there to give uh, both parties uh, an out with you know X amount of uh, time of notification. Um, absolutely. What I can do is uh, uh, between Amber and myself, we can draft something up, and then I can just uh, pass an email around to council just for. Uh, verification uh, if that would be the wish. I just want to uh, add this as an addendum to it um, and I'll have the uh, 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 the Royal Canadian Legion sign it just like as if they've signed and they'll sign the addendum and then uh, that will uh, that will complete that transaction. Okay, great. Any other questions? Uh, Councilor Caulfield. I just have a concern about the um the very first clause, the, that the town shall complete all winter and summer maintenance operations and parking lot repairs. Um, I, I'm concerned that parking lot has um, potholes in it that you know a small dog could get lost in, in spots. Um, clearly there are issues with the grade under the paved surface or what remains of that paved or blacktop surface. Um, I'm really concerned that if there was another flood um, like that parking lot was under a foot or better of water right up and into the legion, um, that further erosion of that base, which already appears to be relatively unstable, could result in massive repair bills. And I just wonder if there's been any look at the, the actual physical construction of the parking lot to know what we're into um, for parking lot repairs, because paving is expensive. So, yeah. Um, Councillor Cal uh, Caulfield, the... Uh, the, the understanding between uh, the Legion uh, and the town of Bancroft is it's minor repair, so it's filling the odd pothole here or there. Um, the Legion has also um, tried to have a funding application to have the whole parking lot paid, so, or sorry, paved, not paid. Um, they understand that the, the, parking, the parking lot and the, and the condition it's in, uh, they're more concerned about the minor maintenance uh, on that. But uh, mm -hmm. if it would be, uh, if it would help, then we could also, um, we could add something to the addendum of uh, minor minor um, maintenance repairs instead of uh, being on the hook that we'd be into doing major maintenance repairs. I think that's a good idea. Great. Yeah. Uh, anybody else with anything? So uh, all in favor, please. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to call for a five minute uh, break at this time. Um, um, I'd like to give you some great reason why, but my dog is driving me crazy here, and I better let him out. It's going to disrupt the whole meeting. So, we'll we'll reconvene in five minutes, please. Thank you.
Just we're waiting for Councillor Wiggins. Hi guys. <laughs> okay, everybody's back now, so we'll reconvene. So we have uh, item E, a wrap in Courage Proclamation 2021. I'll read it, it's draft resolution. It says, whereas violence continues to be the greatest gender inequality rights issue for women, girls, and gender diverse individuals. And whereas November is Women, women Abuse Prevention Month, and whereas gender-based violence is a human right issue, which our community must work together to address, prevent, and address through public awareness education, and whereas one in three women will experience gender-based violence in their lifetime, and these members increase exponentially for LGBTQ and Black, Indigenous, and women of color, and whereas the COVID-19 pandemic has increased barriers to support and services for survivors of gender-based violence and their children, and whereas last year in Ontario, every 13 days, a woman or child was killed by a man known to them, with the majority being their current or former intimate partner. And whereas this month and throughout the 16 days of activism against gender-based violence, we acknowledge our community support of the Rapid Courage campaign and commitment to end gender-based violence. And whereas on November 25th, the International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women, a Rapid and Courage 2021 campaign flag will be raised in recognition that the courage of a woman alone is not enough, and it takes an entire community to end gender-based violence. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of Town of Bancroft does hereby proclaim and declare that November 25th, 2021 shall be known as the International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women. And further, be it resolved that Council urge all citizens to recognize this day by taking action to support survivors of gender-based violence and becoming part of Ontario-wide effort to end gender-based violence. Could I have a uh, mover and a seconder on that, please? Councillor Miles moves and seconded by Councillor Coffell. All in favor, please. Thank you, it's passed. Uh, business arising from notice of motion, there's none. Notices of motion, none. The consent agenda, approval of consent agenda, be it resolved that the items listed under the consent agenda, items 16B to 16M, be received by the town of, Corp of Bancroft for information. Uh, are there any items in there that anybody would like to have dealt with independently? Councillor Coffell. Item K, the resolution from the city of Kitchener with regard to rent evictions. Okay, so we will, so this will read, um, I, you say it was K, uh, so it'll be B to J and then L to M uh, is what we will be dealing with right now. So uh, could I have a mover on that portion, please? Councillor Paul? Reagan? Yes. Paul, I'd like yes. to uh, talk H and L also, just comments. Okay, so, sorry, H and L? H. And L. H and L. Okay. Sorry about that. That's okay. So we're moving everything except the ones that uh, Councillor Caulfield mentioned and Councillor Wiggins <laughs> mentioned. We'll pull those individually. Um, and all in favor of that, please. Oh, sorry. Did I? I needed a mover first. Or did, I, did I get a mover? Where did you go? Did, did, no move. I need a mover first, please. Mover. Councillor Wiggins, you'll move that. And a seconder, Councillor Caulfield, you'll move it, move it. And all in favor of that, please. Thank you. Now we'll go down and deal with, uh, did you say H? H, yes. Okay, so item H, Ontario Municipal Partnership Fund 2022 allocation notice. So could I have a, a mover and seconder for that, please? Councillor Wiggins, I'm assuming you'll move it. Yes. And Councillor uh, Miles, you'll second that. Councillor Wiggins, please speak. I was just wondering if uh, our treasurer could comment on that. It appears like, I believe it's better than last year. And I think it's uh, worth noting that the, the amount of money to get back from the uh, from the province on the uh, location notice. Uh, I'm not sure if Bill wants to comment on that or not or whether he's able. Well, before Bill comes on, I'll make a comment myself is the formula hasn't changed. Um, it still doesn't recognize um, 
hub communities such as ours that provide services to uh, a, a much greater area outside of ours. We've made a several presentations to uh, municipal uh, to Ministry of Finance on this, and I I think we have asked for another delegation this year at uh, Roma. So. Uh, Anyway, that's, I've always got to put my two cents worth in on that one. So Bill, I'll hand it over to you for any comments. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor and, uh, and councillors. Um, uh, the, the 2022 uh, OMPF allocation uh, is like a million 488,000 uh, approximately. It's the same as 2021. Um, there's, no, there's no increase um, year over year. <clears throat> um, previously, the previous year, there was like a 1.2% or 1.4% in increase. So, um, so surprisingly, it, it remains the same. And when you factor in inflation, and which I, I, I believe the numbers are uh, really not reflective of what, we're ex what we experience, because we have high fuel costs, et cetera, which have gone up much more than the rate of inflation, um, yes. We're actually going backwards on this. I would agree with your point. Thank you. That's what I that's what I anticipated, but I just want to tell me that. Thank you. Okay. All in favor of accepting, please. Thank you. What was the next one, uh, Councillor Briggins, that you had? Oh, which was the uh, grocery. Oh, okay. Loyalist. Okay, we'll do that, and then we'll come back to uh, Councillor. So, L Loyalist College, Town of Bancroft, Bruce Three. Endowment fund, could I have a mover and a seconder on that, please? Councillor Wiggins, seconder, seconded by Councillor Miles. Councillor Wiggins, go ahead. I'd just like the uh, audience to know that we do contribute to our graduating loyalists uh, uh, personnel every year. And this year it will be a $50 grad, uh, endowment for them to form with education. I'd just like to point that out, that's all. Thank you. So all in favor? Thank you. Item K, City of Kitchener Resolution Renovations. Uh, mover, please. Councillor Caulfield, I assume you will move that. Seconded by uh, Councillor Barry McGibbon. Councillor Caulfield, please speak to this. Um, so I would really like to throw our support behind this one. Um, in, in the community and human services field, we have seen the frequency of renovations um, really increased during the pandemic as um, folks from out of town snap up cheap properties, evict people from those properties, renovate them and then sell them uh, as flips, really eliminating housing uh, for middle and lower income uh, brackets in the community. Some folks have lived in some of those houses and apartments for you know, 20 years. They probably were in need of uh, you know, new carpet and flooring or a paint job or a new um, siding, but um, they're, that's being used as a reason to evict them and then double or triple the amount of the rent that they put that unit back on the market for afterwards. Um, so the, the points in the, in the letter uh, drafted by the City of Kitchener are very valid and occurring daily in our community. Um, and I just, I think it's important to point out, I don't know that it makes any difference to policy at the end of the day, but um, it is happening here and I think it's worth acknowledging. So are you referring to a case where uh, the property is sold or where uh, a, a landlord actually retains the property and, but just uh, evicts the individual and then has them come back, or I mean, sorry, and then puts it back on the market for rent? It happens both ways. Um, so lots of folks sold their rental houses to other people who bought them as investments and then the purchaser evicted the tenant, renovated and, and re-rented uh, at double or triple the rent. But it's also happened with buildings that are still owned by the same person. Um, so I, I'm just going to play the devil's advocate here. Sure. I, I think this speaks to the general terrible situation of the whole uh, rental market and, and an individual's rights if they have a piece of property to, to renovate it or sell. Now, doesn't the tenant get first right of returning? Is that not how it works? They do. There is a, a provision in the Landlord Tenant Act to allow them first provision. Um, but what's happening is the rent that they had for $600 a month that their 
rundown apartment, that apartment goes back on the market for fourteen or sixteen hundred dollars a month, and it's just out of their budget, so they have nowhere to live. And basically, the landlord gives them one month of rent in exchange for losing that housing um, right. if they if they can't accommodate them with the new costs. So um, it it really just further disadvantages the disadvantaged. Tough. It's a tough one, that's for sure. Yeah. It is. Okay. Okay. All in favor? Thank you. Pass. Thank you. Uh, uh, community announcements and events. So would anybody like to speak to this, please? Councillor Tracy, yeah. we have, I, I've been in contact with you about the Santa Claus parade. Maybe you'd like to chat about that since we haven't been able to actually meet face to face. I was just going to mention the Santa Claus Parade in Bancroft's run by the Legion or the Lions again this year is December the 4th. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we just like uh, to give them a shot for doing it in, in these trying times and to welcome our residents out, but try to remember uh, be safe and uh, keep your distance and wear your mask, all the good safety things that we need to do to get through COVID because COVID isn't gone, it's still here. We have it downtrodden, but it's still still around. So it's something we all have to be aware of. So anyway, on that note, I asked uh, Councillor McGibbon, who has a knack for these things, to to try to come up with a float uh, ideas for the town, et cetera. So I don't know if she wants to add any comments or if she wants to keep it all under wraps right now and until. Yeah. <laughs> still pondering with some ideas, but very, very exciting that um, we can actually host one this year. I know a lot of people are just excited about that and thrilled that, you know, things are getting somewhat back to normal and, and uh, no, very exciting time for sure. So yes, I do have some ideas um, for float, which I'll divulge here shortly. Um, just wondering if I have any of you to help out with that. So that's, that's the next thing, depending on what I do, depends on how many people I can get to, uh, to help me with it. Well, I think as uh, Councillor Wiggins mentioned, with this being the end of COVID, and I think uh, it's important for the town to, uh, you know, to take a bit of a leadership role in that. I, I think we all should try to volunteer and, and help out with this. As you know, I think in past years we got a space over at the uh, Public Works uh, in one of the bays where we uh, put it inside and it allowed us to work on it over a little period of time, because. Because we all know if you leave it to the last minute, it gets left to the last minute and then it's, uh, you know, et cetera. So um, uh, not that I'm putting any pressure on everybody, but I'm putting pressure on everybody. So, uh, <laughs> Councillor Barry McGibbon. I've been voluntold already, so. <laughs> well, Good then you should, be, you should be supporting my call that everybody's going to come out and to participate. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Thank you. So there you have it. We did it in a public forum, uh, Tracy. So the, the heat's on everybody to help out on this. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Thanks okay. so much. Okay. Anybody else with anything with respect to the community? Seeing none, all in favor, please. Yes. Thank you. So bylaws, first, second, and third reading. Uh, be resolved that the following bylaws be introduced and read a first, second, and third time and be finally passed and that the mayor and clerk do sign and seal the same a rule of this council to the contrary notwithstanding. Bylaw number 83-2021 being a bylaw to amend comprehensive zoning bylaw number 27-2006 as amended. Bylaw number 84-2021 being a bylaw to amend comprehensive zoning bylaw number 27-2006 as amended. Bylaw number 85-2021 being a bylaw to authorize the Corporation of Town of Bancroft to enter into a contract for service agreement with the Royal Canadian Legion Branch 181 for use of Legion property parking lot as a municipal parking lot. Bylaw number 86-2021 being a bylaw to adopt the winter maintenance policy for the Town of Bancroft. Bylaw number 87-2021 being a bylaw to adopt a tipping fee schedule for the Dungannon Waste Disposal Site for the Town of Bancroft, and bylaw number 88-2021 being a bylaw to authorize the Corporation of the Town of Bancroft to enter into a transfer payment agreement with Her Majesty the Queen and Right of Ontario as represented by the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. Could I have a mover and a seconder on that, please? 
Uh, Deputy Mayor and Councillor Wiggins, all in favor, please. Thank you, pass. Um, so we will be moving into closed session. So I will await the, uh, the, the clerk to give us the green light on that. So we will just read the resolution to go into closed and then we will stop the oh. live stream, please. Okay. Uh, be it resolved that the corporation of the, uh, the, sorry, the Council of the Corporation of the Town of Bancroft is hereby moved into closed session pursuant to the Municipal Act SO 2001, Section 239-2B, personal matters about an identifiable individual, including municipal or local board employees, general nature COVID-19 vaccination policy. Could I have a mover and a seconder, please? Moved by Councillor Barry McGibbon, seconded by Councillor Wiggins. All in favor? Thank you.